Have you ever thought about the composition of an apple? No. Look at the person next to you. What are they made of? <laughs> Pretty much the same elements. But it's the way in which they're put together that makes the difference. The order is unique. I'm a materials engineer, schooled in Australia. And I look at materials, I look at the details of materials, I look at the composition, I look at the assembly. The assembly is important. You know of the saying, diamonds are the girl's best friend. Well, for a materials engineer, crystals are the best friend. Crystals are where order is expressed in nature. Crystals are important in our everyday lives. Think about where we see the crystals. Each of us are wearing crystals. One example is a mobile phone, the silicon crystal. Another one, abrasives to uh, machine components. We have experienced a single crystal when we're flying. We can actually be very grateful for those. They're in the turbine blades in jet aircraft. There's crystals everywhere. There's also crystals in ice cream. 20 years ago, I entered the world of gastronomy. This is where I saw the importance of order in ice cream. I brought science into the kitchen. As an engineer, we always try to see how we can apply what we learn. So I want to share my discovery with you about a great treat, where the structure is important. Have you recently eaten ice cream? How many of you have thought about the structure of ice cream? Oh, OK, you've got a couple of people there. Well. Ice, ice desserts, the composition can be similar, but the structure is different. There are two extremes. There's the Ben and Jerry's. Who's enjoyed a Ben and Jerry's? Mm. Ben and Jerry's at one end. In the middle, we have the supermarket ice cream. And at the end, couldn't resist. Had to make my own gelato. I put that in as well. So I want to point out the importance of the structure. So in the first scenario, we have the Ben and Jerry's ice cream. It's full of great ingredients, cream, sugar, eggs. It's a great taste, very filling. It's dense, it's hard, it's rich, it's hard to scoop. That's why you've got a different type of serving spoon. It's got 17% fat. I told you it's full of, full of goodness. <laughs> it's also got a lot of add-ins. Nuts, chocolates, cookies, sauces. They really go to town on this ice cream. There's very little structure inside, so let's put that away for a moment. The next is a supermarket ice cream. Supermarket ice cream has got more structure. It's simpler, it's easier to eat, it's softer. Half of it is composed of air. The air is incorporated inside the ice cream. The air, however, dilutes the flavor, and that is why, very commonly, you use uh, some type of uh, flavoring agent. And so you have lower quality ingredients, but you have the structure. And the last, where well, you have the structure, is the gelato. Gelato, full of flavor, full of structure. This completes your eating experience. I could just smell it just standing here. It's like leaping out of the bucket. Now, you always uh, put a lot more of the, of the natural ingredients inside. So the natural ingredients uh, stay in your mouth. You can taste the flavor five to 10 seconds after it melts in your mouth. It's healthier, it's got less fat. So if it would be a cream-based ice cream, typically about 7% fat. So the structure is, has got less air, it's soft and it melts in your mouth. 
have a look at how easy that scoops. No. <laughs> Don't have my cone there. All right, so let's down, down. Okay. All right. But there's more to optimize the crystals. This is where we may think about the shape of the crystals. We can use crystals to make larger objects. The assembly of those crystals defines the properties of the final product. In the laboratory at the university, I make synthetic materials. Really, I'm growing crystals. I'm growing crystals with a certain composition. And I look to make certain uh, crystals that can integrate well with a bone. Bone is a natural assembly of materials, and it's structured to improve the properties. You may be surprised, but bone also contains crystals. They're long crystals, they're assembled with collagen, and that provides good mechanical properties. The power is hidden in how they are assembled together. It's not a simple assembly. The crystals are put together at different levels of order. So we can see, we can see at the very, at the very uh, left hand side, we have these little gray crystals. They are all oriented, they're aligned, and they're interspaced uh, with collagen molecules. So this is the basic building block. You have many of these put together inside fibrils. Fibrils are inside the cylinder, and that makes up a fiber. So you can see the order as it builds up. These fibers are put into layers. You can see the orientation of the fibers in the different layers. And it is this arrangement, this order, which provides amazing mechanical properties. They think of newborns. They can fall down very freely. Their bones don't break. Okay, they have very, very tough bones. So order is also important within synthetic materials. Crystals, we synthesize the crystals. Uh, coatings can be produced, and the coatings are, made, uh, are placed on hip processes. Commercially, these types of processes are available. It's good that the bone crystal composition simulates that which is already in nature. So it's already biocompatible. It works well on, on the prosthesis and integrates with the bone. However, there's a problem. The crystals inside are randomly oriented. Bone grows up to the surface of the prosthesis, and so the prosthesis is integrated into bone. But you can do much more. We can control the shape of the crystals. You can see that this is a long hexagonal crystal. We can also align those crystals together, pretty much like the order that we saw within bone. And then we can put these aligned crystals in a coating on the prosthesis. My team has spent about 10 years looking at the fine order within these bone crystals. So the bone crystal contains calcium, ions, phosphate ions, and hydroxyl ions, the same molecules that we found in our ice cream. These molecules have got electrical poles. You can compare it with a battery. Okay, on one end, we have the hydroxyl, you've got the positive charge. On the other end, where you have the oxygen, you've got the negative charge. These, typically, within the coatings, are randomly arranged. But can we, can we arrange them? Can we introduce an order? Let's have a look at an example from a choir. There you go. They're all organized. They're all looking at the conductor. We know that we can expect a good outcome. If they'd be looking in their own direction, then it'd be fairly disorganized. But since they're all looking towards the conductor, you get the most volume and you get the best acoustic effect. In a similar way, going back to our hydroxyl ions, we can think about arranging these hydroxyl ions within the crystal structure. Okay? So if we can arrange all these hydroxyl ions, if you have a look to the right-hand side, you can see a positive uh, upper side, a negative lower side, then you can introduce an electrical charge at the end of the crystal. 
in this case, on the surface of the coating. And so that way, we can improve the properties. Researchers found that bone cells like to grow up to this type of surface, and bone growth is a lot more active. So we've increased the value of the material merely by playing around with a charge. But we can do more by aligning these hydroxyl groups. Okay, so we can increase the value of the material by the crystal shape, the orientation of the crystals, and also by the orientation of these hydroxyl ions. So we can expect improved lives from these value-added implants. I and my colleagues hope to see this future. So I've shown to you how materials impact our body in food, in tissue, and also within implants. So the take-home message is do not only look at the composition, but look at the order, the assembly, and the structure. Well, that will improve the performance. Thank you.